This is a new state, I try to get right This is a new state, I get on track Yeah, that's life in football This is a new state, to live your life This is a new state, I try to get right This is a new state, I get on track Yeah, that's life in football It's life in football We are life in football Welcome to the Life in Football Podcast, baby. I'm your host, Mike Fee. And this your co-host, Colin Moore. You know we loving life and enjoying football. Top-notch players all around the world. Top, top-notch players all around the world. Today, we got the X-Man on. That's right, I said it. The X-Man. And I don't care what nobody's talking about around this country. Yeah. Xavier Smith, hands down, one of the best I done seen country i'm talking about he will he'll find you right receiver right but i put any amount of money he can go to clemson or how you stay wherever he gonna start and do his thing that's if y'all ain't hating on him but i'm gonna tell y'all the truth he had a play he did at the florida class i hate they called it but he was running i don't know what they call it but he running across the i probably shouldn't even say it because they're gonna be looking for it but he running you know how they do the little motion um, McKay just boom, just, just tossed it to him. Bro, the man was looking like a speed bullet. I remember I called C Mo and I said, C Mo, bro, you ought to seen it play. He said, I seen it. He was talking about the other play. He didn't even know it because he has already scored. He didn't know what I was talking about. Man, the man looked like a speed train just running past everybody. And he went, I like how he had, he had dove in the touchdown. They called it back the end zone. But I'm telling y'all, man, this is one of the best athletes in the country. I don't care what y'all saying. Me and Smee, me and Simo, my co-host, we were debating after the season. Like, is he cutting? Well, y'all know we watching everybody. You know, B1, uh, ABC, everybody. We watching everything. So we were debating like, man, is he going to come back? Because they had him on the HBCU Legacy uh, roster. We're like, oh. So I ain't going to lie. I said, I think, I think he probably should come back. Simo said, yeah, man, he probably should. Before we know it. Find out he was coming back. But I'm telling y'all, man, if y'all ain't been to a fair you game and seen that Xavier Smith, you better get there. Cause you ain't changing number yet. You still nah, 19. Nah, nah. I'm gonna rock out with 19 until I leave. Number 19. I'm telling y'all, man. <laughs> y'all get a chance. When you, I don't care if you a Florida State fan, come check him out, man. The whole team over there balling, but he one of the top notch ballers over there. But without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and let Sebo bring him on. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I appreciate y'all for having me on the we show. We got Xavier in the building, man. So listen, you don't know about it, but I know you know who it is because they probably go through the history of film. So the first time I really seen a wide receiver from film, it was, if I'm saying his name right, Jaquez Nunnally. Jaquez Nunnally? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that boy out there catches so many passes. I'm like, who in the world this person he, he is? Too, yeah. And I'm like, dang. Because I, 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 you know, you you looking at the Florida State, Florida, Miami, but he catching so many passes, you got to figure out who yeah. he is. Yeah. So I watched him at this All-Star game. It was, you know, way back then, but I watched him in the All-Star game. And now to have another big time wide receiver on, and we watch you, but I get to actually talk to you. I never got to talk to him, but right. we eventually will. Right. But I'm glad we get to talk to you because, man, you be out there breaking them boys off. I'm talking about you break them off so nice. One time you broke them off on a, um, I was going to save it and put it out, but you broke them off so nice. I said, no, if I put it out there, the other teams might watch it because they're going to see you showing it. Right. And they're going to say, okay, when he get up here and do this yeah, route, yeah, yeah. get him. So yeah. I, I ain't put it. I called Mike. I said, Mike, go look at it. Boy, they said you walked on. I don't know how you walked on. Because right. like Mike said, you could start anywhere in the country. And I know for a fact, I know you can't really just put it on there and say it like that, but Man, you going to be in that league, and For you sure. going to be giving them that work. And yeah. I ain't saying that because you in my face. I'm saying it because I see what you be doing. And it seemed like a bunch of games in 2020, not 20, 2019, I believe. You was breaking them boys off and uh, scoring game-winning TDs, man. Yes, sir. So just break me down to 
how you ended up being a walk on because you too nice. So right. tell me how that even come about. So just just coming out of high school, I didn't have no offers. I guess maybe I was undersized. Mm -hmm. Maybe a lot of coaches just didn't feel like I had the talent to perform at those schools on that level. Mm -hmm. So nobody really offered me. I ended up taking a year off. I ended up getting a job. But my mom, she just was so persistent. She just was so insisted on me going to college. And mm -hmm. she kept talking to people at FAM. You just trying to find a way to get me in school. Mm -hmm. And eventually that opportunity came. So when that opportunity presented itself, I had no choice but to just take it. Because right. at the end of the day, I did want to play football. Even when I kind of strayed away and just probably gave up on myself, probably just didn't even want to play again. Mm -hmm. That opportunity presented itself, and I wanted to take full advantage of it. So my brother was here, and I told him, just talk to the coach for me. And mm -hmm. I want to walk on, and he did that for me. So that's when my opportunity came. I eventually got my shot, and I just made the most of it. So your brother played ball? Right. My, at fam. Okay, right. so because I was about to ask you, what made your mom pick fam? But it's because right. your brother was already right. here. And my, my mom graduated from fam as well. Okay, so, so it's in your blood. Right, line. right, right. And like, that's why I wear the number 19. My brother wore it before me, and I just mm -hmm. wanted to keep that tradition, that tradition going on. Now, you from Polk County, which right. is my county. Right. And, but you your hometown, Haines City. Haines City, Florida. How, you played with Haines City or you played with Ridge? I played with both. My ninth and 10th grade year, mm -hmm. I went to Ridge. And then my 11th and 12th grade year, I played at Haines City. How you did at both schools? If it was up to me, I feel like I laid it all on the line. I feel yeah. like I was always the best on the field. Yeah. If you want to get my perspective. Right. But other people may feel different. But I feel like I, I, I performed the same way I'm performing now. When I got those opportunities, I made plays. Did you have any offers coming out? So, or was it the grades? Like, maybe? It, it really was my grades. I think the most part was my test scores. Mm. So I did have an offer from FAMU, mm. and i say maybe a week before mm. signing day, mm. I called to try to um, get the letter of intent, but they right. told me I ain't have a scholarship no more. Oh. So at that point, I was left with nothing. I, mm. I think I emailed over 100 college coaches, right. emails, and everything trying to just get an opportunity, but nothing, you know, came to me. Now, I know Mike finna jump on, but I got you said something I got to know. With you emailing over a hundred schools, and then God finally allowing you to actually, because you had the scholarship, right, but they right. put how whatever they did. Right. Now you back here, you earn it, you do your thing, you killing them on the field, not you. Right, 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 <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> but with you emailing all them coaches, and I'm guessing they didn't respond or doing what you want to do. How you feel now about the just? Like you, like I was telling before, you about to put the icing on the cake, right, man. Right. So how that feel? Like you, you double down on you, and you are that guy. Right. How that feel? It, it feels amazing because, you know, it kind of it kind of makes you look at yourself in the mirror. Like, am I really good enough? Mm -hmm. Am I good enough to play on that level? And mm -hmm. that was a time where I got discouraged, kind of thinking maybe I maybe I ain't as good as I think I am, right. but. You know, that switch just clicked. Like, I know who I am. I know what I bring to the table, and I know what I could do on the field. I don't yeah. feel like there's nothing on the field that I cannot do. Right. And, you know, that's why I said when I got my opportunity, I wanted to prove to everybody and myself more than anything. But mm -hmm. I just wanted to prove that I know I could do it. I know I could play on that level at a high level. Right. Yeah. Now, I know y'all hear him mentioning his mama. Y'all got to be at the game to see him. Right. Uh, right. Even if he mess up now, nah, you ain't got to worry about nobody else saying that. Uh, right. Mama up and down. Then she going to have a 19 on. I done seen Now, to be honest, I'm kind of biased. Because I go to a Florida State game. Me and fam, you got. I don't know why, fam. You didn't just. They just didn't warn me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it's hard when you go and see that game and that crowd rocking how they rocking. And. To go back. Now, Florida State, you know, they do that thing. They got to be. Well, fam, you, that thing different. I don't know what's going on with Coach Simmons. That boy got something over there, man. And I got to, you know, give it to your mom, too, because every game I'm at, 
she walking up and down the stairs. She walking. <laughs> she try to talk to you. Yeah. And uh, you know, I just gotta give a shout out to her too, man, for doing her thing. So how was it for you growing up? Like, you know, give us your family dynamics and how everything was growing up. I I come from a family, a strong family of strong black women, and that's my mom. That's a strong black woman. It's never missed it. Not. I ain't going to say never missed a game, but if she could be there, she was going to be there. It could be an hour, it could be three hours, it could be four, it could be six. She'll find a way to make it to that game, work late nights on Fridays, and right after she leave work, she's coming to my football game. And that's what she's been doing ever since we was little kids, ever since we were little kids. She never wanted to miss a game. If she miss a game, she'd be hard on herself. I'd be like, you know, mom, sometimes... It's all right. I know you trying. I know you going to make a way. And just when I'm on the field, that's what I'm doing. And for I, I, I know all the hard work, all the sacrifices she made to even watch us play, to even get us an opportunity to play. And, you know, I, I want to make it to where, you know, you know, she'll be straight forever. Yes, sir. Now, I got to tell y'all, y'all heard him say she had all. So, I ended up going to the playoff game in uh, Southeast, I mean, Louisiana. And uh, sure enough, his mama was there, walking up and down the stairs. But hey, come on, tighten up. Now what's wrong, baby? Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, it, that's special to have, you know, family tied in with you and locked in and they'll support you no matter what. And I just got to know how it is for you. Now, y'all just heard me talk about how family you over the, <laughs> they bought. If you, hey, if you in the Tallahassee area, and you talking about you like football, but you just watching Florida State and the NFL, you tripping. Matter of fact, I'm going to say you a lie. Because you need to be over to fam you and checking out these games. Because I'm telling you, you ain't going to want to go to nothing else now. I don't know what Coach Sim how they put that together with the DJ up in the stands. and the, the whole They got their own dance on. The whole crowd be rocking. Yeah. I ain't seen it. Now, I'm a little biased too because I went to Alabama State. So I don't like they doing it like that. It's so good, man. <laughs> and um, but when they played my school this past season, I'm in the stand. I got my stuff on. I almost went to the bathroom and took everything off, man, because they were whipping us so bad, man. <laughs> and the crowd just rocking. And you can tell, fam, you kind of eased up a little bit. And it, and I feel so disrespected. Like, we can't get one touchdown. Now, Bell State, I ain't no disrespect. It's still love, baby. But I got to give a love to the Rattler right now. How is it for you playing in this environment, what Coach Simmons got going on? and Like, like how is it, man? Like, what, what y'all? It's special because for me, it's like I grew up kind of watching fam. You going to the classic. That was something I, I, I wanted to be a part of. And now that I'm here, it's, it's, it's a blessing, man, because – I say this all the time, but there's no fans like fan you fans. And you can see it every game. They they there. They they crunk. You see the dancing. You, we got a DJ up there. Man, it's a it's a different atmosphere. And that's just a testament to what Coach Simmons and the rest of the coaches brought. They created that culture for us to win. And once you win it, you see the love that you get around you. So, man, it's a, it's always it's always I always make sure I thank Coach Simmons. I thank my coach, Coach JB, and I thank the rest of the coaches because without them, we probably wouldn't be in this predicament. We probably wouldn't get the atmosphere and the culture that we starting to get around found you. So it's really a testament to what they brought to the table. Now I got to go back to what you said. You said you took a year off. I actually took a year off before I went to school. So instead of going the correct year, I pushed it back as well, right, but right. thank God I did because that's how I ended up meeting him. Right. So with you pushing it back, everything going the way it need to go right. just because of that. But what job did were you working <laughs> when you took that year off? I was working at Amazon. You did? You was? Yeah, I was, was it hard? It went hard because I try to finesse my way. So <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't like working on nobody's job. So I was kind of finessing it. I worked with a couple of people who, you know, from my, from where I'm from, and, mm. you know, I went to school with them. So they taught me some of the ropes to where I could do certain stuff and what I couldn't do. But most of the time I'd be wrapping packages or mm. stack, stacking boxes or scanning the packages. So that's what I was doing while I was working at Amazon. Now, you just made me think of something about saying your hometown yeah. and everybody. 
Did you watch when they had DJ Law yeah. on that episode yeah. and they brought the Haynes City and it seemed like he turned the whip and they had that music bamming? Yeah. Boy, if they do one of them episodes like that with you, yeah. oh, that thing going to be fine. <laughs> that thing going to be fine. I always say I got a plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a plan. I ain't going to really yeah, yeah, say yeah. too okay, much, but okay. I got a plan for when my time come. I'm going I'm to definitely go back. Yeah, definitely go back and show Man, my city something. Allow us for sure. to be a, be the camera people for yes, you. Sir. Allow us to yes, document sir. that thing yes, for sir. you, boy. Yes, sir. You got some, man. Yeah. Nah, nah. See, he said, see, Simo said when he get it time, get what? He already had it time too, now. If y'all ain't see on that ESPN documentary, they had him on there like his own episode one time. They had him in on the uh, treadmill and all kind of other stuff. And I remember just looking like, dog, boy, fam, I'm doing it right now. Yeah. And the camera work was so good and clean and, uh, just watching him because he been doing his thing for a minute now and just watching him do his thing you know and fam you together it's almost a winning combination automatic um just, just, you know just the overall aspect of fam you it's like see i grew up around here now i know y'all heard me say i went to alabama state now i would have loved to play a fam but growing up it was like a major event to go to the game that's how it is now it didn't got back to that like, well, everybody, you got to go to the family game. So back then, um, the head coach was named Billy Joe. And they had the, uh, they, the receiver, they used to call him the Rag Boy. Now, y'all heard Simo talking about him earlier, but he just was talking about Nunley. They used to have number four, Keenan Lamb, yeah. number 88, Mitch. That, when I say they had some the receivers out there bowling, <laughs> you used to go to the game, it was like fireworks just watching the game. And that's what they doing right now. Matter of fact, Coach Simmons, I like one time he had a post, the Rat Boy 2.0. And he right. right. That's what they are, the Rat Boy. Because a lot of the older folk, the fam, you you know, back in the day, people, and I ain't even that old, but, you know, I remember that because they used to call them the Rat Boys. And now he's, you know, with them being the Rat Boy 2.0, they really do. You got number, number 85, number 10, 19. Now they got number 13. Let me tell y'all something. This a squad here. Matter of fact, what's the other boy? Number 84, 83. I done seen so many receivers and so many bowlers that it's like, fam, you level is just top notch, man. Just the running back, offensive line, quarterback, defensive line, line back. Let me tell you something. If I'm a recruit coming out now, ain't no way I'm going to overlook them routers. And, just with you, you know, going through, you know, with this fam, you right now. Um, like, I want to know how it is when you talking to other people out there, like other teammates you didn't probably play with or they at other schools, though. Right, right. Like, how they see what y'all got going on? If if we been honest, most of them want to come now. Oh, okay. Most of them want to come to fam, you. But that's just how I go back to say that's just what we created. That's yeah. the dynamic we created. That's the culture we created where now everybody's starting to see the vision that, you know, some people had a long time ago, like how you say back with the other rap boys. They set the standard, and now we just picking back up on the standard that they left off on. Them, the national championship teams, those guys are the ones who set the standard. Those are the guys who created this culture. Those are the guys who made fan you what fan you is today. And now, you know, we got away from that, but now we just trying to pick back up and, you know, get fan you back to where it's been since it's been started. Back to Billy Joe, back to, you know, those guys, Earl Holmes and all those guys. And we just trying to, you know, create that same dynamic that they had long ago. So now it's people starting to see what we creating, and that's all it is. Well, man, I'm finna wrap this up. I got to say something, too. What I like about he know the history. I hear the names he dropping. Now, some of y'all might not know, these big boy though. <laughs> they legendary. Some of these boys play in the league. Earl Home, he played in the league for a long time. Legendary fan, you rattle. And I'm telling you, man, what they got going on over there right now, Coach Simmons and them rattle, shh, you better jump on. You better jump on right now. Hey, sir. I, I almost want to become a Booster Club member, but I can't go. I play the Alabama State. My boy <laughs> going to talk about me too bad. But, uh, man, it just, I just got to say I appreciate you for coming on. And when y'all get a chance, go to a fan you game. Look for number 19, Xavier Smith. I'm telling you, 
you ain't going to be let down because he might be returning a, a punt, a kick, a uh, running back, receiver. You don't know where he's going to be at. Just know when he get the ball, something to have. I wanted him to score so bad. I was at a game. They played Grambling, and uh, it was on the sideline. They threw some kind of little pad to him. He got up out of there. I thought it was going, but some kind of way he ended up on the sideline, about a, about a 20 something, 30, probably 30 some yard run, whatever. But when he moving, it's like lightning, man. I love to see him when he coming down that sideline and he just be moving. I can only imagine how his mama feel. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I know she want to get up and run with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, yeah. people slot. don't know when, when when I was a kid, I scored a touchdown. She the one on the sideline doing cartwheels yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so I I know how she feels. She yeah. probably could do cartwheels now. She are doing. Yeah, 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 for sure. Now I don't want to keep throwing it out there, but it's out there. They need to know. Um, during the spring, they had took pictures of you talking to all them scouts. Man, how did that actually feel? Like you could basically like, that's my cupcake. I'm finna have that. Yeah. Like. What? How did that feel talking to them? And they like they know your name, they know everything about you. It, it feel good because it kind of show you the hard work that you put in and mm -hmm. starting to show other people starting to take notice of the way you working, the way you performing, and the plays that you making. So it's a blessing because everybody out there that's their dream, mm -hmm. that's their yeah, dream to you know make it to the NFL. And when a scout can come to you and he know you and know what you do and know you know some of the plays that you making, that's that just feel good, and it gives you an extra motivation to keep going. Like, okay, I'm getting closer, I'm right. getting closer, I'm getting closer. And, you know, that's that's it's just a blessing, man, and I thank God for that. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, man, they got a big game that's coming up, and y'all make sure y'all go check that out too. They playing Jackson State. It's going to be down there in Miami, baby. D County, 305. The orange and green against the blue and white, JSU. Now, if it's my pick, you know I'm going to lean a little bit to the Rattlers, but it's going to be one of the best ball games in, this, in the whole nation that weekend. So I'm going to just leave y'all how I always leave y'all. Keep your head up and not down, or else you'll fall to the ground. It's the Life of Football Podcast. Catch you next time. This is a new day to live your life. This is a new day to try to get right. This is a new day to get on track. Yeah, that's life in football. This is a new day to live your life. This is a new day to try to get right. This is a new day to get on track. Yeah, that's life in football.